It was nearly one year ago to the day yesterday. It was game 12 of the 2005 season in the throes of a season long nightmare. The Saints were losing to Tampa 10 to 3 in Tiger Stadium to fall to 3 and 9. It would be the start of a season ending five game losing streak. And at the time, if I remember being able to think at all then, I thought more than just another game had been lost. I was pretty convinced the city would be losing its NFL franchise in the future, near or far. At that time, who could possibly have imagined that even one, much less all, of these things would be happening one year later? Saints fans would make an early exit from the Superdome with over four minutes left in a game with the long-hated San Francisco 49ers with another one-sided score of 31 to 10, but with the Saints winning. At the two-minute warning, Tom Benson would take the public address microphone in hand, announce his heartfelt appreciation for Saints fans' season-long sellout support, declare a price freeze for next year's season tickets, and bask in the glow of their warm applause in the stunned appreciation of Saints fans who a year earlier had made him fear for his life and the safety of his family in their midst, he said then. The Saints would be running their record to 8-4, and four, ensuring their division lead, enhancing expectations for not just a playoff berth, but a first-round playoff bye and a home field postseason advantage. They would be doing so in part because of Drew Brees at quarterback, certainly the comeback player of the year, a candidate for the league's most valuable player, and arguably the best free agent acquisition in the history of free agency in the NFL because of Sean Payton, the leading candidate for NFL Coach of the Year, because of Marcus Colston, the league's 252nd draft choice, who's a leading candidate for Offensive Rookie of the Year, unless he's beaten out by Reggie Bush, the league's second draft choice. Because Reggie Bush's can-do is catching up with his want-to, did you see the moves he put on some of the 49er defensive backs yesterday? Faking them out so completely that he turned their athletic supporters into <laughs> Reggie Wedgies. <laughs> if this is just a dream, and maybe it should be, and I'm really in a coma driving back on I-10 from San Antonio, wake me, shake me when it's over, because from this, I don't ever want to wake up. A week ago in this space, I referenced Buffalo Springfield in declaring that something's happening here. For those of you who remember that, do you remember this from the same era? Don't let the past remind us of what we are not now. A year ago, I would never have believed any of this. And I'll see you. Philadelphia was playing host to Minnesota in the 14th and final game of one of the worst seasons in Eagles history. The 1968 team started the year by losing their first 11 games. Uh, they were probably the worst team that the Eagles had ever put on the field in their history at that point. Eagles fans had been clinging to one cherished hope. If their team finished with the league's worst record, they'd be able to draft a brilliant running back from USC named Orenthal James Simpson. But then the Eagles lost the OJ sweepstakes by winning two games in a row including a sloppy 12-0 win at muddy Detroit on Thanksgiving. And the fans had nothing left. The season is lost, OJ is lost, and you had just had a stadium full of really frustrated, really angry people, all sitting on top of a lot of snow. <laughs> so you tell me what's going to happen. The Eagles were a bad team in the late 60s, but they had pretty good halftime stuff going. They had a Christmas pageant every year. They had the Eagles cheerleaders dressed up as elves. They had a 50-piece band uh, all set to go. They also had Santa Claus, or at least they thought they did, until bad weather set in. Santa Claus never showed up that day. The guy they had booked to be Santa looked out his window that morning and said, foot of snow, I'm staying home. And they, they began halftime with no Santa. Into the drama stepped this man, 20-year-old Eagles fan Frank Olivo. In the last game of the year, every year, I would go dressed as Santa. Just, you know, sitting in the stands having fun. So the fellow that, that approached me before the game was the entertainment director, and he asked... He asked me if I'd uh, uh, be their halftime Santa Claus. As halftime neared, the Vikings scored on a long pass play. Meanwhile, the temperature continued to dip, and the mood at Franklin Field darkened. Truth be told, the fans were in such a bad mood, none of us wanted to see Santa Claus to begin with. 
Now the governor of Pennsylvania, Ed Rendell, was in the stands that day as a 24-year-old fan. I recall, and maybe it was just because we were all surly, but I recall that he was a woe-begotten looking Santa. Lacking the necessary Yuletide props, the Eagles makeshift Santa was issued an equipment bag to use as a toy sack. And here comes this lousy little Santa running down the field. So they start to boo. You, I, I, you hear the booing. You hear it. And I said, well, you know, I understand. I understand what the, what's going on here. You know, they're, they're not booing me. They're, they're just booing Santa Claus. They're booing everything today. The booing reached a crescendo as Santa neared the end zone. Then, as planned, he walked off the playing field. But he still had to get back to the other side of the field, so he walked back along this track within easy reach of the fans. So he was a sitting duck. I mean, you, you could have imagined that there was going to be trouble just because he was so close. And as I was starting to walk back, I saw the snowball starting to come, and, and, and then I started getting hit with them. And believe me, in the, in the first 15 yards that I walked back around the horseshoe, uh, I got hit a lot. Santa Claus is dodging and ducking, and there's a full stadium full of people just wailing away at Santa Claus. I actually remember feeling a little twinge of anxiety that they might really hurt Santa. I remember watching a fella make a snowball and th throw it at me, and, and I just walked up to him, you know, at the bottom of the wall there, and I said, you're not getting anything for Christmas. Perhaps this has been weighing on your conscience for a long time, Governor. Maybe you've been thinking about this for the last 37 years. Did you boo Santa Claus? Oh, yeah, I booed him. Absolutely. I didn't throw any snowballs, but I booed him. Whenever somebody wants to make a statement about how tough Philadelphia fans are, the first thing they say is, well, those are the same fans that threw snowballs at Santa Claus. It's the foundation, you know. If you think of it as a building, this was the foundation. All the other incidents were constructed on top of this foundation, but this was the foundation. Not only did they boo Santa Claus, but they pounded him.